Hey folks, welcome back. It's uh, the first Sunday of uh, National Poetry Month and uh, I'm going to read a couple more poems for you. Um, hope everybody's staying safe and clean and uh, making sure they're staying inside and uh, washing your hands and all that fun stuff that I've been talking about the last couple of days. Um, two poets today. Um, I'm going to keep it nice and short. Uh, I was looking for two nice short poems um, from... I was going to say two nice short poets, but only one of them is short. One of them is actually very tall. Um, so, um, and important poets to me, and hopefully after this, important poets to you as well. Uh, today we're going to be reading um, uh, Harms and Holmes. Um, James Harms, who um, was the first person I ever studied poetry with at, in West Virginia, um, and um, Janet Holmes, who uh, was the uh, person that accepted me and allowed me to come study at Boise State University um, with her, uh, amongst others. Um, and I'm just going to read two of their poems for you today, um, and hopefully you enjoy it. I haven't, um, uh, it's been a while since I've been away back in West Virginia, um, but one of the big things that I picked up on when I was in West Virginia was a love for bluegrass music. Um, and so Jim Harms was a, a big influence in my life. I spent a couple years studying with him, um, and um, while I was there, I was inadvertently studying bluegrass music too because uh, it came from Jersey and Queens so uh, we didn't quite have bluegrass music around uh, but it was quite influential on me I, I, I enjoyed it I loved it and um, uh, I, I, I wanted to read a poem about it uh, so um, uh, this poem is called Bluegrass uh, the epigraph says uh, Bill Monroe 1911 1996 uh, <coughs> Excuse me, and this is a quote from him. Um, it says, in life he had always, oh no, this is a quote from the New York Times, excuse me. In life he had always passed out quarters to all the children he saw. As he laid in the open coffin, mourners, uh, the grown-up children he had been kind to, walked past by one by one and laid quarters inside. Losing my, my daylight, give me one second. Right. How many find a way to make a word their own? to bend it into slow silence. How many find a name for who they are outside the space of the breath surrounding Bruce or Bob or Bill? In a small community church of pine slats painted white, a line of children has grown into baffled nicknames. For how they drive or play a banjo, for the way a lock of hair curls, for a short fuse at the end of a Saturday night, a line of children grown a line of children grown taller than mowed Kentucky grass, bailed and sacked high enough to see Tennessee. A line of men and women who've never left Rosine push, pushes past ghosts from the grand old Opry. Those toothless shades who flutter like loose laundry in a strong wind who carry unstrung fiddles and busted mandolins and try to sing from torn throats whose ragged lungs can't hold the air. The children of Rosine step past the rack of Nashville to join, to drop coins in a coffin. And though it can't be so, they hear their names as they lean down, how he always gave them quarters and sang their lives, sang exactly who they were, called them by their given names, John, Lewis, Betty, Sam. Not speed or twang or curly cue or rage, they lay their change in the felt beside his hands and listen, there, though there's not a ghost in sight with wind enough to sing. But somewhere, a broken Philco plays on a sunken porch. A car radio carries on through the wreck, uh, through the wreck is, excuse me, back up a second. But somewhere, a broken Philco plays on a sunken porch. A car radio carries on, though the wreck is smoking, the body crumpled behind the wheel as if a few notes swallowed hard long ago are now songs sung from silence, like the sky at dusk, how it seems to lose its blue to black. The color of daylight has fallen from heaven, has landed in the grass, the bruised blue brass. James Harms, uh, West Virginia. And so uh, via James Harms, uh, through traveling 2,400 miles away to West Virginia. Um, I found out that um, uh, Janet Holmes would 
was interested in me coming to study out in, in Boise, and I was like, okay, let's go. Um, I went to Boise, fell in love with the city, um, met some really wonderful people there, including Janet, um, including her husband, Al, um, including her dog, Duncan, who I uh, love and miss, and uh, may Duncan rest in peace with all the doggies in heaven. Um, love the little guy. Um, but um, I wanted to read one of her poems. Um, and so uh, a poem that struck me when I first got out there was this poem here because um, well, the voices were interesting in the poem and um, there's a little dog in the poem as well. So I guess I'm always going to like that. Excuse me. It's funny because we used to talk about in grad school not writing cats and cat poems and dog poems or Tom Trusky cat poems or something like that. Um, so, but uh, screw it. They're going to be in my poems, whether I like it or not. And I want more dogs in my poems. I want more dogs in my life, but I'll take one for now. All right. Uh, this poem is called uh, The Blue World by Janet Holmes. There, says the guidebook, they live in peace all winter. Tunnels glowing, glacier blue. In the short afternoons, the worst predators gone, gone, gone. It's frozen. But under the snow, a paradise of shrews. Thirteen lined ground squirrels, deer mice, voles, who feed for months on the forest floor. There's no wind. The air warms in narrow channels. Silence. Silence. True, some scrabble up to the crusted surface, discontent with the crystal walls, the delicate ice-carved runes. True, the great gray owl hears its prey through the three-foot snow wall. Sl slim weasels negotiate a maze. Danger even now. A vole emerging in the winter trail surprises a lapdog out for its walk, whose dormant instincts quickens, who seizes it, shakes it dead. Drop it, girl. Good girl. We pass the fresh crater of a, squir a squirrel maid having ex exited a high branch and its quick prints off, I'm sorry, and it, its quick prints off to a different safety. So comic, a pratfall? Here, my love, something to make you laugh. No, 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 I'm happy, honestly. Light, filtered in blue, softened, and all afternoon through cold walls. Really, I am, see? I'm smiling. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Jim. Uh, happy, or again, I keep saying happy National Poetry Month, but enjoy National Poetry Month. Uh, take care.